Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha. Today I have a very special review for you. This is the Soul of Chogokin Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Megazord. This thing is epic. I mean, just look at the box. Look at the box, and you can just tell how epic this looks. This is this is so cool. So, for those that don't know, this Soul of Chogokin line is top-notch, high-quality collector items. These are not toys. These are not even collector's items that Toys R Us sells. These are truly high-quality, expensive collector's items. So, keep that in mind. Uh, if you are interested in purchasing this. This is the first one that they've done for Power Rangers, and they've, you know, gone with the original Megazord, which makes perfect sense. And they have some really, really cool collector's packaging, as you can see right here. So, first thing I want to mention, the price. The price may vary depending on where you get it, but roughly 300 This thing is not cheap. Is it worth it? We're going to find out. But just keep that in mind. You have different levels of items. You know, if you wanted a little mini Megazord toy, uh, you can get... Oh, I don't have it with me. I thought I had it with me. But basically, the mini little Megazord you can get if you collect all the Legacy figures. You can get the Legacy Megazord at kind of the... What? I don't know what the price point is. Less than $100 price point. $50? How much was the Legacy Megazord? I don't know. Less than $100. Or this is truly the ultimate collector item, $300. So this is not your average toy. So keep that in mind when we're looking at the detail on this thing, everything that goes along with it. So, premium item, premium packaging. Really, really cool artwork that you see right here. This is from Tamashi Nations and Bandai, so kind of this joint little collaboration. You can actually get the uh, Daijujin, the, um, the Japanese version, with a different box, but this is the box for the American release, if you get it. I got this from Big Bad Toy Store but you can also get it elsewhere as well, so keep that in mind. Um, the top of the box here has this really cool little image of the Megazord's helmet right there. Pretty interesting. Um, the side of the box shows you the different Dinozords, and it says Megazord GX72. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming maybe that's the 70, number 72, the 72nd item in the Soul of Chogokin line, something like that. I don't know. The side of the box... Same thing, except you got a background image of the Megazord. Uh, and then here, you have all the different features that it has. So, looking at the box here, it says, After over 20 years, the Megazord is reborn in composite die-cast with the Soul of Chogokin series. So, these dinosaurs are very detailed and meant to look exactly like their original TV series, as it says there. And they have lots of die-cast metal pieces. Now, I'm not going to read everything that this box says, but I do want to sort of point my camera in their direction, and you can pause the video and read it. So here's the Tyrannosaurus Dinosaur, talking about all the different features right there. Um, it mentions all the points of articulation, lots of articulation there, which is super cool. I love that. You have your Mastodon Dinosaur as well. The trunk has articulation. That is so cool. I'm excited about that. Die-cast parts um, in the legs. Lots of interesting pieces there. Then you have the Pterodactyl Dinozord as well. Um, again, very, very cool. The chest is die-cast, as it mentions there. The Sabertooth Tiger Dinozord. Looks awesome. Looks really, really cool. Lots of articulation there. The chest and foot claws use die-cast parts. Uh, lots of articulation. This is just, like... Cool. I really love how the box just details every bit of it that has the die-cast metal and the articulation. It kind of talks in full detail about it. Triceratops dinosaur here as well looks amazing. Then, Megazord sequence has been initiated. There you go, folks. Boom! Just the classic, iconic dinosaurs like, going across the side like that. Looks so cool. And they can form the attack tank mode. This looks amazing. So, just like from the show, looks incredible right there, and then it can sort of rise up, and Megazord activated! Boom! I'm gonna pause, or I'm gonna move the camera right here so you can pause it and read it, but it talks about um, the Daijujin from Jew Ranger. Kind of gives you the history of the Megazord, which is really cool to see, definitely. This is, this is really, really cool. Um, you have the, the Power Sword that it mentions right there, the Mammoth Shield. This just looks incredible. So, 
yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. I just, I really wanted to give you a good overview of what this is and all the pieces there before we jump into it because there's just so much happening here. So, without further ado, I wanna do a little bit of an unboxing. So, I'm gonna open this up for the very first time. I'm excited about this, so um, I have to be careful about this box because this box is just incredible. I'm gonna have to save this. All right, pop this open. And, you guys ready for this? Is this upside down? This is upside down, all right. So, <laughs> make sure I'm opening it up right way. Ooh, that looks interesting. Okay, there we go. So we have a, uh, I'm guessing this is like the instruction booklet, basically. And then inside, you have the dinosaurs. This looks awesome. So. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these like in much detail, but I'm just gonna quickly pull them out real quick, give you my first impressions. Oh, look at that, I love the shiny die cast metal. This thing just looks, oh my gosh, oh, look at that. It looks so sleek and shiny. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm already in love with this. I'm already in love with this. Okay, all right, what do we got here? We got the Triceratops. I don't wanna get my fingerprints all over this thing yet. Like, this is just incredible. Ooh, look at that. This just looks amazing. Oh, man. So cool. All right. Saber Tooth Tiger. Ooh, look at that. This looks great. All right. Pterodactyl. Very cool, very cool. And of course, we have the Tyrannosaurus Rex right here. Oh, this just looks awesome. Oh man, okay. So this is great, this is great. What do we got, oh, is this power sword? <gasps> Look at that massive power sword, this is great. Okay, so I'm excited about this. So anyways, um, I'm gonna open this up, mess around with it, learn all the, the, the pieces of it and, and really get familiar with it and see what it's all about and then show you the full details. So without further ado, let's take a look. All right, I have the Soul of Chogokin Megazord out of the packaging, here it is. By the way, I have brand new studio lights and I'm really excited about them. So hopefully you guys enjoy the lighting in this video for this high quality product. I wanted some high quality lighting. So hopefully you guys like this better and you'll be able to see all the nice details much more easily with this with this better lighting. So here we are. I uh, just wanted to show you guys each of these dinosaurs up close. These things are amazing. I've had a decent amount of time to really look into each of these and, and all the little ins and outs of every little dinosaur. And there's a lot to it. I mean, these guys, there, there's a lot happening here. I mean, they just look incredible. There, there's so much detail on these. Uh, and, and it's one of those things that like, maybe, I, I don't know what it was, but when the first, the Legacy Megazord came out, I thought it looked incredible. And I also never had the one from the original 90s and stuff, but I loved it. But once I put it next to these, it just doesn't compare. Now, there's a huge price difference, but I do want to show you guys that comparison. So. Let's kind of move these to the back and let's start with obviously the main event, right? This is the T-Rex. This is the, the, the big one that has the most articulation and detail here. Uh, in fact, let's actually get these guys out of the way so that way we can truly focus on this new dinosaur. So, with that being said, here is the Tyrannosaurus Rex right here. Pretty amazing looking thing. <laughs> There's a lot of great detail here. Lots of great detail. Um, the There's die cast in the chest, thighs, and the foot claws. I mean, down to the last little bits of detail. Lots and lots of die cast metal. It feels really nice, uh, looks really nice. I mean, this thing is just awesome. Now, comparison, I'm gonna bring in the Legacy Megazord, or Legacy uh, T-Rex sword right here from the Legacy Megazord. So this is the Legacy one. This is the Solo Chogokin T-Rex. Immediately you can see big differences, right? I thought this thing was awesome. The die cast metal was really cool. But, I mean, clearly you can notice 
For one, the die cast metal kind of sticks out, especially against the gray plastic right here. Here, they blended everything in very nicely with this silver finish. Looks great. I mean, just down to the little detail. Like, you can see, obviously, on the head here, right, this guy kind of shrunken a little bit compared to this, right? You can see clear differences in the head right there. Um, looking at the sculpt here, there's no stickers like this. The stickers kind of lopsided and stuff, right? No, this is fully painted, the entire thing, no stickers at all. Uh, so definite, definite improvement. I mean, you got a little sticker there? No, you actually have green right in there. You know, no stickers at all. Um, no joints, Zord Builder joints sticking out. And so that's one thing, by the way, Soul of Soul of Chagokin Megazord is not Zord Builder compatible. So if you do want Zord Builder, that's one plus that Legacy Megazord has, but that also comes at a cost of the joints sticking out like that. Now this guy has joints, but they're hidden, which we'll talk about later. This tail, one piece. Here, fully articulated, kind of, you know. So lots of differences there. I just kind of wanted to really articulate that so you can truly see. And I'll be transforming the Legacy one alongside this as we go, so you can really get a true comparison. Uh, now, cost-wise, which is going to be worth it for you? Is this going to be worth it at a much higher price or the other one? Well, that's up to you to decide. But what does this thing do, right? There's lots of little, little things that it can do. For one, I want to mention as well, I'm going to kind of skip ahead a teeny bit and bring in the pterodactyl zord. So the little cannon pieces that can form kind of like the, the legs or whatever you want to call them, these can actually be stored inside the T-Rex. So you can actually open up the chest piece right here, okay? And these little cannon pieces can be stored right inside. There's actually this little piece right here pegs in like so. So very nicely and neatly just kind of pegs right in a little bit. Okay, if I can, oops. <laughs> I said nicely and neatly and then it doesn't want to go. Um, okay, there we go. And then this was just fold up like so, and now it's hidden, as you can see. So, um, hidden right there from sight, pretty cool. I'll take them out later when we go back to the pterodactyl. Dinosaur, but uh, very nicely done. So that's pretty great. Now, these arms actually have full articulation. So the other ones on the Legacy one were just one tiny piece, right? This plastic, that just that's it. They, that's all you could do. This guy here, you can basically move the arms up and down, um, and they even go side to side a little bit. A little bit, but enough. Um, you can bend right here double joints, one right here and then one right here. Right here, this, 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 uh, the claw can bend. And it can even open up. So I can open like so, or close. So you have lots of articulation. So really great posability with this guy. Great posability. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can also move the head up and down a decent amount, as you can see. And the mouth does open as well, like so. And look at the great detail on the mouth. Like, look at the, the little teeth. I mean, just that's just awesome. The little blasters inside, like, such great detail on this. Like, it just looks amazing. Really, really cool stuff. Okay, the tail, this thing has articulation. Now, this tip does, you know, open up. So if you want to kind of pose it downwards, you're going to have to stop it a little bit like so, but pretty great articulation right here. So it does click in down below, there we go. Um, but you can really pose it a decent amount. Okay, so great articulation there with the tail. You even have some articulation on the sides right here with these pieces. So you have that and he rotates all the way around. So instead of just being forced this way, you can lean him this way and like that, boom. Like that's incredible, that level of posability. Like there's just so much great posability that you have with this guy. Like it's, it's insane. And that's not all. I mean the legs too, like really 
can bend a decent amount. These can twist all the way around. These can bend like at the knee, like so, basically. And the feet can also move forward and back a little bit. Uh, there's actually a joint hidden right in here, which is what, you know, sometimes if you kind of tilt it and it comes undone, you just have to sort of fold it over it again. You can't push the foot back too much. This whole piece has to go alongside it if you do it. So if you just push it on its own, it's gonna pop open. So you kind of have to put your thumb there and then push it back, but you can still do it. You can pose it a decent amount, as you can see. It's pretty great, and then this piece just kind of can slide down to sort of hide that exposed joint. So they really tried to hide these little joint pieces so that visually it doesn't look like it can transform and stuff just by itself, but when you sort of put it all together, you can see that it does. The foot also bends a decent amount uh, as well. So an incredible, incredible amount of articulation. Um, this thing is just, amazing like it's just truly truly amazing I, I don't know how they could do any better than this i mean i know i kind of thought the legacy megazord is pretty amazing but this is truly truly incredible um yeah so that is the t-rex okay so let's bring in uh the triceratops right here so let's jump into that zord Okay, so here is the, oops, Soul of Chogokin Triceratops right here. So this thing is also pretty amazing. Uh, unfortunately, I got my fingerprints all over it, and in this light, it's really reflective, and you can kind of see that too. But uh, yeah, this guy just looks awesome. Um, it has some detail on here that I just didn't even know was detail. I'm so used to just this thing being one solid piece that I didn't know that it sort of extends outwards and looks more like a tank. Like this thing looks like a beast now um, with these extendable, you know, pieces right here. Like this just looks great. So again, lots of articulation on this thing as well, but real quick, just to kind of compare, let's bring in the legacy Triceratops. Look at that. I mean, it's one solid piece and you have a sticker in there, look at that sticker and look at how it just bent up and it's just not that great, right? Now, one thing to note is here, there's no color and stuff. Which is more show accurate, to be honest? I don't know. Um, I don't really know. Um, so if there is supposed to be red there, that is one downside to the Soul of Chugokin Triceratops. But then again, you have a sticker. So, sticker or no sticker, you know, you take your pick. Um, here you have this kind of being more gold versus this being yellow. Um, not sure again which one is a little bit more accurate, but I'm assuming the Soul of Chugokin is because it overall just seems to look like it. It blends a lot, uh, a lot better. Um, and down here you have one solid piece for the tires where you actually have sort of what, they're not truly tire treads, but they look like it. And visually that just makes it look much cooler. Also one solid piece, and this is the piece of die cast that makes this thing heavy. Um, here you have this movable piece and movable cannons at the end as well. So you have um, a bunch of different things. And you have the front, right, the claws right here. Uh, the tread axle parts, those are all die cast. So uh, right inside there, uh, a little hard to see, but there's some, some die cast right in there as well. So um, pretty great stuff. So articulation wise, this thing actually has some articulation. Like it, it was just a previously, just like a brick. But no, here you can actually, like I mentioned, the legs can go in and out like so. Oops. So these do go in and out like that. So it looks pretty cool. Um, definitely pretty sweet. The This piece, as I mentioned, goes up and down and this rotates. But the head also tilts up and down and side to side a bit as well. So a decent amount of movement for the head, which is pretty cool. The mouth also opens. So we have an opening right there for the Triceratops. That looks really cool as well. So pretty great. But the other part that I wasn't expecting is, guess what? Boom. <gasps> what? The horns. The Triceratops horns actually come out. That is insane. Boom. Like, if you just imagine him, like, attacking and latching onto an enemy, like, that actually just, it just comes out like that. Like, that's amazing. Uh, and so if you want to put it back in, you just sort of slowly kind of just guide it right back in. 
So there's no, there's no gimmick with this. Like you can't push a button and it shoots out the head or something like that. Um, no, this is more, you know, it looks much nicer and really great quality, you know, but it's meant for display purposes. You can really have it displayed with the horns out on something or, you know, you can kind of take your pick, but, um, Really, really cool, again. So this is the type of thing that you give to a kid, it could probably break if they mess with it too much, you know? So you really have to be careful, and you also have to realize what this is. This is not your normal toy. This is truly, truly a collector's item. The Legacy toy line, I feel like, kinda flirts with those boundaries a little bit, you know? They, it has die-cast metal and stuff, and it says ages 13 or 15 plus on the box. So, you know, it's truly collector stuff, but kids, may be able to enjoy it as well. This, I would really not recommend for kids. Absolutely not. Um, unless you really think they're truly responsible and not gonna like play around with this thing and damage it much, because it's truly a collector's item. So, that is the Triceratops, enough of that. On to the next item here, which will be the Sabertooth Tiger. Let's take a look at that next right here. And this thing also looks Incredible, as you can see, no stickers. This is entirely paint. Very nice shiny, shiny silver there. Um, just a great finish overall. Um, it just really looks great. The Saber Two Tiger, gosh, they just did such a nice job with this stuff. It looks amazing. <laughs> it really, really does. Now, for comparison, let's bring in the Saber Two Tiger from before, right? Um, so if I want to actually kind of pose it a little bit more similarly to kind of get it more down on the ground like like that one is showing, you can definitely do that. So let me do it like so, just for a little bit more accurate comparison. There you go. Because um, unfortunately, you really don't have much flexibility with this. This is one solid piece. It's not like you can get the legs going up more. That just looks weird. Uh, these you might be able to a little bit, but again, it just it looks weird. It's not meant for that. It's meant to be that one singular pose right there. Um, but the Soul of Chogokin Saber Two Tiger, you can really pose a lot more. Now, this thing also feels much lighter than this. The diecast metal is concentrated in the tail. It's kind of spread out here as well. A bit more of a solid uh, yellowish color, a darker yellow versus the yellow used for the Legacy um, Saber Two Tiger. But you can also tell, again, there's like a yellow sticker inside. This one doesn't have that, which is more accurate. I'm assuming Soul of Chogokin, uh, but, you know, just for comparison's sake, there you have that. Um, so, again, really, really cool stuff. And the Saber 2 Tiger is not bad. The Legacy one is, is not bad at all. You know, it's, it's, it's good for what it is. Definitely really cool, but in comparison, this thing just shines. So... What does this thing do? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the tail. So the tail does move up and down, but it also can shorten and extend like so. Okay, so you do have that. Um, as I mentioned or kind of showed, the legs can move in and out and um, little bits of bending right here. And the feet also bend as well. So you do have a bit of posability with those back legs. The front legs can also move forward and back. And he does bend right here and bends down here. So again, decent amount of articulation. You can really pose it in, in lots of different ways. Really cool. But what's also great is the head moves up and down and bends right here at the neck as well. So not only is it just gonna go straight up, you can have him tilt it down a little bit too. Like you can really, you know, um, pose it in really cool ways. The mouth opens up as well, very menacing. You can see the little teeth and stuff right there. Really cool, this thing just looks awesome. Great, great stuff, definitely. Uh, and it does tilt a little bit side to side, but it's kinda stiff for me a little bit but you can see it does tilt a little bit side to side. So that is certainly possible. So that is the Saber Two Tiger, pretty amazing. All right, on to the next item here, which is Mastodon. So the Mastodon uh, also looks really cool. Um, and this is one that when I saw it, I was like, okay, looks cool. And I guess I just forgot what the Legacy one looked like because in comparison, it looks so much better. But this thing right on its own uh, looks 
really nice, nice shiny silver again here. It feels great. The weight of the, the die cast metal really balances out. The front of it looks really cool. Nice shine to it. I love it. Uh, and it feels fully complete. Uh, there's no exposed joints and weird stuff. It's It feels like one solid um, piece, which is definitely great. So, yeah. Lots of really, really cool detail on this guy. For comparison, let's bring in the Legacy Mastodon right here. And you can immediately see <laughs> some of the differences. Main being the front. Uh, the Mastodon was kind of silverish in the front here for some reason. Now, it's granted it's not full black, it's a darker gray, but at least it blends in more with this, you know? Um, also, no stickers, again, on the Solar Shugokin. The tusk is one solid piece, that's it, it doesn't move. Here, you have articulation in the tusk! What? How does that even... What? I don't even... That, yeah, that's insane. That is just absolutely insane that you have articulation there now. Like, that is so cool. Um, also, in the back, here, a little weird. You have the fists kind of just visible right here. Here, they're covered up. Totally covered up, so they're not visible. So, again, it has that nice feel to it. Just overall, nice, solid dinosaur right there. Really, really cool. So, uh, that is that. Now, last but not least, we have to bring in the pterodactyl zord. Um, now, I do want to quickly um, bring out, oops, the, uh, the little pieces from the T-Rex. Oh wait, that's the legacy one. I didn't even, I just grabbed it without even paying attention. There we go. Here's the actual one right here that can store those pieces in there. So let's take those out, move that away. Okay, so this is the pterodactyl right here and it looks pretty great. Um, it does have fingerprints all over it, unfortunately, so that kind of really just sticks out, but uh, really nice shine to it, definitely. Some great detail. Looks really, really nice. The pink right there, like, just looks really cool. I, the pterodactyl I was never the biggest fan of, the design, because it just it's so simple and plain looking, you know? And here's the legacy one right here. Um, so, you know, not too, too much of a difference, but decent difference though. I mean, the paint, everything's a little more streamlined on here. Um, it does, the chest piece is a little bit bigger right here, the silver, as you can see, but the main difference is the wings. Here, the wings just look pathetic, right? You actually have decent size wings now, so that looks better. But the best part is, you know, like with this, if you were to take this off, you have your pterodactyl like that, right? looks pretty lame, it's just all gray, and just, yeah, like, what is that? That's supposed to be your pterodactyl? No, like, that's just, it, no. <laughs> Here, you can take this out, and now I present to you the pterodactyl zord. Now we're talking. I actually like it displayed like this better than I do with the leg pieces right here, uh, because you have all the extra added paint. This thing looks cooler like this as an actual pterodactyl flying because that's what a the pterodactyl does. You know what I mean? So that is really, really cool and I dig that a lot. Much, much better than the Legacy version as you can see. That alone just makes it so much better. So you do have a decent amount of, you know, movement in the head right here. It can move forward and back a decent amount and bend up and down and all sorts of fun right there. The legs, or sorry, not the legs, the wings do uh, close inwards as well uh, as part of the transformation, but yeah, really, really great stuff overall. So that is all the articulation. There's a lot that I showed you. This video is already super long, but there's a lot that I wanted to show as you can see. So next up, I want to transition and let's start getting to the actual transformation. So let's jump to that. All right, so to start the transformation, we're gonna go to the attack tank mode first. Obviously, just like how they do on the TV show, they go in the tank mode first, right? So we're gonna do that. So to start the transformation, what you're gonna do is you're gonna push these pieces inwards on both sides, okay? And then you're gonna push down these wheels a little bit. They're gonna click all in place so it's a little bit more flat downwards there, okay? Then what you're actually going to do is you're gonna take this little cannon piece right here you're gonna fold this so it's horizontal, and then take this entire thing and fold it inward so it's flat like that, and you have the red visible right there. Again, not a sticker, 
it's solid red paint. Great stuff. So, fits in very nicely like so. And then right down here, you just wanna make sure that this back piece is instead of you know up or anything, it has to be folded down just like that, okay? So that is the Triceratops. So alongside it, legacy version, there. <laughs> legacy version is easier to transform, I will tell you that now. But as we continue on and do the comparisons, you'll see the differences in detail that come alongside that. All right, so let's move that away and let's bring up the Sabertooth Tiger right here, of course. Great, great stuff. So, push the tail in like so. This leg is going to fold all the way inwards like that and so is this one, okay? So, just like that. Then on this side, you're going to twist the legs so that the red is facing horizontally straight like that and make the legs go flat forward like so. Okay, so you want these to be flat just like that. Then the tusks, so you also, you wanna make sure the head is fully down like that, okay? And then the tusks are actually gonna be tilted upwards like that. And then on the back, you also wanna make sure again, this piece is facing down like so. So it's essentially going to be flat just like that, okay? So bring in this Sabertooth Tiger and here, we're just gonna make it flat like that, it's inwards like that, and tusks can go upwards like so. Okay, so we're pretty much similar right there. Okay, so that is that one. Now let's bring in the pterodactyl zord right here. Pterodactyl zord, you're going to fold downwards like so. And then the wings are actually going to fold inwards. Now, there's a proper way to do it. Uh, because if you do it the, this way, so if I'm holding it like this, this left side in first, right side in like that, you see how it lines flat up? That's perfect. If you did it the opposite way, where you did this way in first and then this, notice how it's like sideways, it's slanted, it doesn't fit in properly. Um, so they actually have it set in a way so that this piece actually um, oh, and sorry, actually when I was demoing the pterodactyl zord, I didn't realize these pegs were sticking outwards. They're supposed to be flat like that. Uh, so, real quick, this is the true pterodactyl zord. I had those pegs sticking out, I think. So, uh, there's so many little, little pegs that I keep missing stuff like that. Uh, so that's one thing to kind of keep an eye out for. But anyways, sorry, getting distracted. So this one in first, then this, so it lies flat like so. So that looks great, okay? And there we have that. So we'll, we'll just move this to the side. I'm not going to show you anything much with this, except the legacy one will just fold them both in like that for now. And sure. Okay. So next up, let's bring in the Mastodon right here. So with the Mastodon, we're going to pop off the head like so. Okay. So we have the head right here. Then this is kind of new compared to the legacy version. These pieces actually fold upwards like that. Okay, and what you're actually going to do is you're going to tilt this forward, both sides, like so. And you're actually going to fold these in a little bit. So it gets a little bit tricky, but essentially, if I can remember how this goes a little bit, I think it folds in like that, and then like that, and then like that. Yeah, there we go. So imagine this is all one solid piece. So that kind of just fold, or no, sorry. This is one solid piece, the middle one. So this folds in like that, then it folds in like that, and then like that. And you just wanna make sure it kind of sticks in, like instead of like that, just make sure it's fully flush and clicked into place, like so. So it blends in very nicely, and it looks really great, okay? So there's that. Then, you're gonna take the legs and tilt them upwards like so. Okay, you're gonna have to kind of hold a little bit because it's heavy, so it's gonna do that. Now, what we're going to do is open this up like so. Okay, and for now, we'll tilt these up like that, I guess. I don't really know which way it is. It's hard for me to kind of leave it this way. Once I bring in the T-Rex, it'll all make sense in how I transform it. So I'm just gonna leave it just like this and we'll move these away and move to the T-Rex and see how that goes. Uh, but real quick, I do have the legacy one as well. Pop open the head and essentially, you know, that can go like that. 
this pop open. So very similar, except you don't have the, the hidden piece right there that covers the back piece. It's just all one solid shoulder right there. Okay, so moving that away. Now bring in the T-Rex sword right here. And this one has a bunch of new transformation pieces. So first thing is we're gonna take a look at the knees right here. And this piece folds down, okay? Folds down. And what you're actually going to do is this piece you're gonna slide up as well. And this joint, you're gonna to wanna to slide forward. So it's horizontal like that, okay? Then you wanna basically fold this back so that essentially the goal is, it's a little hard to show. Let me do both legs. Let me fold this out. Let me take this side as well. Fold this out, fold this back. Okay. So essentially what you wanna try and do is you wanna pose it in a way that, if I can get it done, yeah, this piece is supposed to be horizontal with the ground, basically. So, like that, okay? So it's kind of horizontal with the ground. It's not perfect right now, um, but there we go. You can kind of just pull this up, fold this back a little. Oops. Takes a little bit of playing around with just to kind of get it just right. So again, this transformation is gonna be a little bit more difficult than your typical one because of the great detail that this thing has. Um, so it does come at a cost. So there it is right there. Okay, so that's good enough. It's horizontal. Um, you would, if you actually had the, the pterodactyl uh, pieces still in here, you'd want to take those out. Then with the legs, what you're actually going to do is you're actually going to pull them outwards. So you see here, it just kind of slides out a little bit, just like that. Okay. Now, let's move this to the side for a second because, oh, actually the, the uh, arms, you can also just kind of sit back flush against it right there. Let's bring in the other T-Rex right here. And essentially, we're just gonna sort of fold up the arms and just make sure he's uh, bent down like that. <laughs> much easier to sort of just have in this position, but not as much range or articulation that you're gonna be able to have with them. So, we have this here. Let's bring in Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger, Triceratops, Sabertooth Tiger. Okay, so, first up, let's take the Soul of Chogokin version right here. Um, whoops, wrong one. Sabertooth Tiger is gonna be on this side. Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you, Sabertooth Tiger, the, this piece folds like that. I didn't do that properly. Um, so, this will slide in. Okay and it sort of clicks into place. You don't really hear a visible click, but you can feel it sort of connect inside. There we go. So you just kind of push in like so, and the legs, you just want to fold down again, make sure they're flat on the ground, just like that. And if they are apart like that, by the way, this has articulation. So you just want to rotate it so they're facing forward like so, so it's flat, okay? So you just want to make sure it's flat to the ground, just like that. Uh, with the legacy side as well, you just sort of plug it in, plug it in, there you go. So, <laughs> that's what we have so far, okay? Now, I'm going to bring in the mammoth head right here, the mastodon head. And you're actually going to fold this piece outwards, just a little bit, not all the way like this, but just enough so that this piece is gonna grip into something on here, which we'll show in a second. This piece right here also is actually supposed to be, um, uh, can be folded in, just like that. So you just fold this piece back in, okay? So it's gonna be just like that, basically. And on the T-Rex, you'll notice in the legacy version, there's a hole in the chest right there, right? So 
with the legacy one, I can take my mastodon and just sort of fold this open and it just sort of just sticks in just like that. Easy, right? but it's got a little peg sticking out just like that. So here, they tried to make it a little bit more elegant. And so this yellow piece right here, whoops, you can't even see. Uh, they try to make this a little bit more elegant. So you just kind of pull this down. Whoops, not all the way, but a little bit. And there's a little hole right up top here where this piece is gonna peg right inside. So let's do that. And it just sort of pegs in just like that. There we go. So there you have the Mastodon like so. Okay, and you can just kind of bend it down if you wanted it a little bit um, like so. Okay, so we have that. This piece, just make sure, you know, it's not tilted up. It's The head can be down a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the arms of the Mastodon and you're gonna fold it up like so. And basically it's gonna come around and there's actually little clips right here that are gonna go into the sides. So it clicks in and clicks in just like that. Okay, and then you'll just wanna Tilt it upwards so it's horizontal, like so. Okay. With the legacy one as well, we're just gonna bring that in. This one clips in the back and the sides, like so. Okay. So that is that one. Now, we have the rest of it. So let me quickly just bring in the legacy one. You have your pterodactyl right here, which essentially in the legacy line just sort of sits in right here, just like that, right? And then you have the little cannon pieces that will attach on to the sides or to the front right here. And that is the legacy tank mode. So let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna bring it back for comparison, but Let's focus on the Solo Chogokin one. Flip it around. You're going to open up these little clips. If I can get them. Some of these little clips are a little hard to open because they're, they're hidden very well. <laughs> but they do open, there we go. So it pops open like that. And if I can get it open, There we go, just like that, okay? The pterodactyl has the little holes right there and it's essentially going to just sit in. Oops, if I can get it to fit in. This is really difficult with the camera directly in front of me. <laughs> So that's why it's really hard for me to see properly. So I'm trying to make sure I'm getting this in right. There we go. Clicks in. Ah, missed it. There we go, clicked in. And on this side, clicked in. Okay, now it's all clicked in right there. And we have the front cannons, of course. Right there. And right there. And here, folks, right here, we have the tank mode. This is the Soul of Chugokin Megazord tank mode right here. From the side, from the front, well, this thing just looks pretty amazing. Um, again, a little bit more involved with the transformation. Some more tiny little pegs, little hidden pieces of stuff because they wanted the detail to truly be there for this thing. You know, like this is um, where you have the good and bad with it all. It's not meant to be constantly transformed. This item is a collector's item. If you want to display it in tank mode, you transform it and keep it in tank mode. You know what I mean? You're not constantly going to be transforming it. That's not what it's meant for. So 
great, great detail. It feels really heavy as well because of all the metal and everything. Uh, but it's pretty sturdy. Like you see, I'm shaking it around a little bit. It's pretty sturdy overall. Some slight movements that will happen, but it's pretty good <laughs> for, for what it is with all those pieces on it. It's pretty good. And, you know, it's got little bits of movement and stuff too onto the side, up and down. You know, the articulation's pretty good again for, for what it is. So that's really cool how, how much they were able to do with this thing. For comparison's sake, I'm gonna bring in the Legacy version, you know, which isn't, you know, super, super bad either. Um, again, cost-wise, it depends on what you're paying for it, right? But looks pretty cool. The main difference is this Mastodon piece just kind of falls downwards because there's no nothing that will sort of hold it in place. So it's not straight up like this, like this one. Um, but overall, I mean, aside from the obvious differences with the stickers and the slight design differences and stuff, overall, it does a pretty serviceable job, but this looks really nice. <laughs> nice and shiny and cool, so I dig it. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh man, so, real quick, let's transform this to the Megazord and then I'm gonna put it to the side. So I'm just gonna pop this off, put this right here, because then I wanna focus on Soul of Chugokin Megazord right there. Take these pieces off the front like so. And basically, boom, 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 this goes here, this goes here, folds here, folds like that, right? As you obviously know, this tailpiece folds inwards, clicks on there, da, 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 folds down, folds down, right? So we have that. Then we have these pieces go right here on the back, like so. Okay, this folds inwards, right? You have the T-Rex head fold inwards, like so. You have this, which has the head fold in, clicks on. This piece opens up, like so, right? And then you have the hands rotate out like that. And there you have the Megazord. And obviously I'll bring in the the uh, the rest of it. Oh, this piece go down. I'll bring in the Mastodon and stuff in a second, but there's your Legacy Megazord. Okay, move that out the way. Let's go back to the main event, Soul of Chukokin Megazord right here. And let's get to that transformation. So when it comes to the transformation to the full Megazord, we're going to start off by taking off the little blasters in the front right here, okay? And we're also gonna take off the Pterodactyl. Okay, just have to be a little careful to make sure it just comes off the pegs properly. Then we're just gonna fold the pegs inwards to hide them like so. Then you're actually gonna take the blasters and they're going to fit into this top little hole right there. So very nicely, they just fit in like so, okay? Going back to the front right here, what you're going to do is you're actually going to take these pieces and slide in the fists. So they're gonna slide forward. Just like that and make sure that the hands are facing forward and these thumbs can go down like so. Okay, so there you have those fists like that. The mastodon head is going to come off and you're gonna push that piece back in. Okay. Then, rotate this around. And what you're going to do is you have the uh, T-Rex tail piece right here, right? So this is actually going to fold up and this back piece is gonna fold down like that. And this is actually gonna peg into the back right here. Oops. So this piece actually, uh, it may be hidden. Actually, it's supposed to be hidden probably. I just didn't, I always forget these tiny little pegs. There's so many, but it pops open and then this can click in and clicks into the back just like that. So there you have it, okay? Good. 
In the front, what you're going to do is you're going to tilt up the Triceratops head right here. Same with the saber tooth tiger, and then also the saber tooth tiger feet fully like that. You want to make sure these pieces right here, then on the saber tooth tiger, this piece folds down like that. So it's basically going to act as extra support at the bottom here. Okay? Now, let's try and fit this in camera. Megazord sequence has been initiated. I can't do the voice, but basically, boom, like that. It lifts up and rises up to its glory. Uh, one thing that you want to keep an eye on here with the legs is you just want to make sure that these pieces right here are folded back, you know, because these, these pieces can sort of pop out. You just want them folded flat backwards like so, okay? So they're flat, so we're good. So that's, that's what you want, basically. And then you're going to fold the legs inwards like that, okay? So these are going to be very snug against each other right there. These are going to rotate downwards, like so. And then we're going to open up the chest piece right here. And this is going to fold in, same way as before. This folds right back up, just like that. Now we have our pterodactyl zord right here, of course. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold in the head so it's flat right against that. And then same order as before, left wing on this side goes in first, then this, so it's flat, just like that. Okay? Now here's where we're actually going to open up the pegs. This folds down, this folds down, so we have our two pegs right here. And these are actually going to clip in to, might be a little hard to see, but there's little pegs, little holes right there. So these will go, click in, and, oops, click in. There we go. Now both sides, make sure my fingerprints are gone, are clipped in like so. And now, of course, we have, dun 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 dun, dun dun dun, dun, boom. That is now folded forward. Look at that. That just, ah. Oh. Looks amazing. I love it so much. Here we have it, folks. I officially present to you the soul of Chogokin, Megazord, right here in all its glory. This thing, I mean, it just looks incredible. Like, <laughs> it looks like a beast. Like, it looks strong and powerful and just... The detail, everything just looks amazing on this. Amazing. I bring in the legacy Megazord right here, right? I thought the proportions on this were great before, but these things are even better. Like the chest piece, everything just sort of just blends in better. Like I thought this didn't look blocky, but it does look blockier compared to this. Somehow, I, it just, it fits better. Even though there are these look some pieces are a little bigger than they are here, it's still overall the proportions look better. And I think part of it is also the top part, which right here, you know, you have these little blasters, tiny little ones in the back, and these horns are huge compared to the face, versus here the blasters are sticking up the top, you know, the head is a bit better proportion there. So um yeah, definite difference that you can see right here. Um just just really, really cool. And here's, here's the best part, okay? The best part about this is articulation on this moves up and down. That's it. The legs move up, forward and back, but, like, that's it. That's, that's the articulation you're going to get. Really can't pose it <laughs> with much of anything like that, right? Okay, that's the articulation there. Let's move that away, and let me blow your mind... And this little guy, the head rotates all the way around, and that's amazing. And look at this. 
What? The arms rotate sideways and he bends at the elbow. What is this? This whole piece rotates all the way around. Nice clicky little joints to let you know, you know, where to stop. Oh my gosh. And you can tilt these inwards a little bit. Apparently my memory card ran out of space, but I deleted some stuff and now I'm back. Okay. Uh, but basically, yeah, I mean, look at this great articulation. It bends right here and look at this, okay? The fists open up and the thumbs can move up and down and out a little bit. Like, he has a decent amount of grip and stuff there. Like, that's a game changer. The legs, you know, not too much bending there, but this piece can bend a little bit too. And they can move outwards a decent amount, so, you know. So you can get decent amounts of stuff with that. So what kinds of poses can you get? Well, let me show you. Look at that right there. Look at that pose. I don't even know what that pose would be called, but it's a pose, it's something. He can do it, it's possible. Like that's pretty cool, the fact that he can even tilt like that, like that's pretty sweet. <laughs> like my point is you can get some really, really neat stuff with this. Um, just the fact that, you know, even just having him standing there but with his arms kind of bent like that just makes it look infinitely better. I, I think that just adds so much more to it. Just, ah, uh, I love the way this design is. It just looks so great. Just awesome, awesome stuff. Now, we're not done yet, all right? We're not done yet. So let's bring back the Legacy Megazord right here. And the Legacy Megazord, we have our Mastodon shield, which just kind of pegs right in there. And our sword as well. Boom, just like that, right? That's pretty much how I had it posed. There's not really much other poses you can do with it. That's what I had right there, right? So this guy right here, let's bring back the Mastodon head. Fold this all the way out, so it's like that, okay? So you have the handle sticking out there. And the tusk actually folds inwards, like that, okay? And, basically, you just give it to him to hold. Just like that. Now I have the sword, which, by the way, let's do a little comparison here. Um, huge difference. This also has some gold right there versus all just being solid silver. And the base is black, uh, like that's big difference right there. And it really shows when he's holding it. So again, comparison, huge difference right there. Like just looks incredible, absolutely incredible. So let's take away the Legacy Megazord. That, that's it by the way for the comparisons. Final comparison there with those two. Uh, we'll, do, well, we'll do one other brief little thing, but basically, there we have the full item right there. I mean, this just looks incredible. The one downside with the opening and closing fists is it's easy for the Mastodon shield to kind of get loose a little bit with that. So when you're moving around and posing it, you just kind of have to, you know, play around with it a little bit. So again, it's not meant to be played around with, but same with this fist right here. It opens up easily. You just sort of display it how you want and stick it that way and you're set, you know? So. That's really the whole purpose of this. Like that just looks awesome. But more importantly than just that, I mean, you can even have them um, in a more dynamic pose, you know, like ready to, to fight down whatever comes his way. Like that just looks awesome. Like, <laughs> gosh, like having this on display This right here is just incredible. I'm trying to get it just right. Look at that right here. I can't even fit it all in camera. That right there, my friends, is the incredible Megazord. I mean, just look at that scale. Ah, just looks amazing. Just looks amazing, absolutely amazing. Ah, this is, I, I really, I'm so happy with this purchase. Um, I took a risk at it because I was afraid with the high cost and everything, but it just, just look at all the great detail. Every little bit of it just looks amazing. Just so, so good. So, so good. So, 
This video has been really long, I know, but there's just so much detail, so much I wanted to show you, every little bit of it. That's, my videos are always long and very wordy and detailed because I want to show every little bit. So, this is the soul of Chugokin Megazord, right? Bottom line, should you buy it, right? You have this little guy right here, or, you know, you have your legacy Megazord right here. Or if you just like the Megazord's design, they do have uh, this little guy, and I honestly, I forgot his name, um, but it's the tiny little version of the Megazord right here. You know, this little tiny guy right here um, is also available. So, what do you buy? For a kid, Legacy Megazord. This one transforms, unlike this guy. This guy does not transform. This one does. Both of these do. But price difference wise, I don't know what price the Legacy Megazord is going for now a day is exactly. This guy's 300. It was, I believe, around 70 when it came out. I might be wrong, but now who knows what the prices are. But still, big difference. For kids, if you really want the original Mighty Morphin Megazord, I would probably go for the different one. But if you want the Mighty Morphin Megazord, Legacy Megazord. Collectors, Depends on your budget. The Legacy Megazord isn't bad. It's good. Um, it is good. I know in comparison, I keep highlighting the differences, but it's 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 great. And if you really want, if you can't afford Soul of Chogokin, my opinion uh, would be to get this, and I don't know how expensive this is, I honestly forget, but if you can afford this as well, this is kind of like, you get the best of both worlds in a way, because this one is sort of your transformable one right here, but this one looks really great on display. Uh, this one actually has even more posability than Soul of Chogokin, a little bit more, uh, and it looks incredible too. I mean, the amount of detail on this thing is phenomenal. Like, it's it's amazing. I love this thing a lot. Like, I just think it looks really, really cool. I mean, like, you can see, it truly compares perfectly. This is not silver, so that's the one difference. But otherwise, like, it matches. Like, it's amazing, you know? But it doesn't transform, and it's smaller. So... Scale-wise, paint-wise, detail-wise, like, this is amazing. But Soul of Chogokin Megazord is truly the, the ultimate version, basically. I don't think you could ever, in my opinion, maybe somehow I'll be blown away in the future, but I don't see how you can top the Soul of Chogokin Megazord. I really don't. Um, it just... I just don't see it. Each individual dinosaur looks incredible, right? The transformed version looks incredible. So much great detail, die cast metal, uh, articulation is great. It just overall, like, it's just awesome. So, if you are able to afford it, I would recommend it. I think the, the Megazord, such an iconic design, really, really great. If they release other Megazords in this line, will I buy them? I don't know. And, and I love the line, don't get me wrong, but the price is what would make me debate it, and it just depends on how much I love that design. For the Megazord, I took the plunge, and I'm very happy that I did, um, but I think you'll have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. But for now, this is the only one that has been released, and this is what I would definitely recommend if you can afford it. If not, these are some other great alternatives, so I would not discount them at all. Like They're, they're worth mentioning and definitely still worth picking up. Um, especially for Zord Builder compatibility with this guy to transform a Dragon Zord and all that other fun stuff. But on its own, Soul of Chugokin Megazord is pretty incredible. So that is that. So anyways, guys, I know this has been a very long review, but I hope I covered all of your questions. If I didn't, please post them in the comment section below and I will answer them for you as well. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Please share it. I went into an incredible amount of detail on this item. I really want uh, people to watch this and, and, and enjoy it. So please share the video and please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much and I will see you later. Thank you again for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. And again, this is the first video that I did with my brand new studio lights. Um, I can certainly make more adjustments uh, if any are needed, but let me know what you thought. Uh, are these lights really highlighting the great detail uh, on, on these figures or what? Let me know what you think. Um, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. I think uh, this, this item was, was worth trying out the brand new lights that I had and really highlighting um, the, the nice detail and reflectiveness and shininess of this, this amazing item. So definitely worth trying out. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you guys are incredible. Thank you for all your support. 
Hope you enjoy this review, and I will see y'all later.